guys my name is ankush kaurav and i welcome you to on to series in the previous tutorial i created a basic web application using spring mvc framework by following these simple steps we looked at each step in detail along with each component which you are seeing here in this spring mvc workflow diagram spring mvc says there are two ways of writing a controller class in your application one way is without using annotations like this and the other way is using spring mvc provided annotations so far we developed this application using the first way that is without using annotations now i'm going to talk about how to write the same controller class using annotations that is the second way so let's start without wasting much time let me straight forward modify this non annotation based controller class with the equivalent annotation based controller class and later i'll explain everything in detail so this is the equivalent annotation based version of hello controller class which we previously wrote with the non annotation based approach spring mvc says if you mention controller annotation on top of a java class then i will consider it as a spring controller there are two benefits of using this annotation approach first benefit is you do not need to extend the hello controller class from any specific base classes or implement any specific interfaces as i did in the previous tutorial while developing the non annotation based hello controller class and the second benefit of using this annotation on top of a controller classes you do not need to put its entry here in the spring dispatcher subdir.xml file you can simply remove it from this file so what's the idea the idea is very simple if you write controller class using controller annotation then you are free from writing its entry here in the xml file but if you are writing the controller class using a non annotation based approach as i did in the previous tutorial then you need to put its entry in the xml file there is an important thing to know about this feature spring says if you want to make use of this feature then you have to place this entry in this xml file here i'm simply telling spring framework hey spring mvc framework please automatically detect all java classes having controller annotation written in them which are placed in this package and also please do consider all of them as if i have put their entries in this xml file if you do not write this statement here in the xml file then you will need to put an entry of every single controller class in this file as we did in the previous tutorial even if all are written using controller annotation clear so this is just a handy feature which you have enabled in your application by providing the component scan statement here in the xml file which will just make your code a little cleaner and with less number of lines of code there's one more good news now you do not need to provide an entry of a handler mapping class here in the xml file also so i'll simply remove it now coming back to the hello controller class again what's this request mapping annotation doing over here what's it all about guys this is a very important concept which i'm going to tell you now and i would need a little more attention of yours to understand it when the request reaches to the web.xml file from a client's browser the request is mapped to the dispatcher servlet or front controller of spring mvc framework the front controller reads this file for further processing the request after seeing this statement here in the xml file the front controller understands that you have used annotation based controllers in the project in this package so the first thing it does is it loads all those controller classes in its memory 
Now it has to decide upon which controller method it would invoke for further processing the request. And how it does is, it looks at the request mapping annotation value of each method present in each controller class in the application and compares their values with the incoming request URL pattern. And whichever request mapping annotation value matches with the incoming request URL pattern, it simply makes a call to that method. In this case, if a user has requested for a web page using this URL, then front controller would make a call to this method after finding that its URL pattern is matching with the request mapping annotation value of this method. All right, so now you know the meaning of request mapping annotation too. This method would simply prepare the model and view object, which is having the data which is to be displayed on the response web page and the view name, which front controller would use to prepare the response. So this method would send this object back to the front controller. The front controller now would find out the exact path of the view which is present in the project using the view resolver class. And this we talked about in detail in the previous tutorial. So for this case, it finds out that it has to make a call to hellopate.jsp file for further processing the request. And this file simply mixes the data which hello controller class has provided to it along with the HTML code and prepares the response using this mixture and sends it back to the front controller. The front controller in turn sends the response prepared by hellopay.jsp file to the client's browser. So the request cycle is completed this way. Let's quickly run the project on the server and test it. So the project is running on the server. Open the browser and place this URL. Click enter. Cool. The application that we developed using annotations responded in the same way as it responded without using annotations. Guys, in this tutorial, I presented things at a very basic level and talked about just a few annotations that you can use in a controller class. In the next tutorial, I'll talk about more about request mapping and other annotations supported by Spring MVC framework. Guys, thank you for liking my tutorials. If you have any queries or feedback, just provide them below the video or simply write to me on this ID. If you want me to upload a specific tutorial on a specific topic in Spring MVC series, do not forget to mention that in the comments below and I'll consider that topic while coming up with the next tutorials in this series. Please hit the like button if you really like the video and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Contour Series and I'm gonna catch you in the next tutorial.